Hi, let's start a discussion on profit and loss problems. So these problems, unlike your guesstimate and market entry, are far easier according to me. The reason why I call them easier is because in a guesstimate or a market entry problem, you have to have a higher degree of creativity. Whereas in this, it's only and only a problem of structuring. Your problem statement in most cases would look something like this. Company ABC is facing X percentage of losses for Y time period. Now, you don't have to come up with new issues. All you have to do is ask a few smart questions, which we will discuss in the third uh, slide, a uh, third video of this particular module. And then be very rigorous in your structure to zero in on the issue at hand. So that's usually not problematic at all. Okay, so let's see how we can achieve that. Okay, so uh, in this particular video, our main focus essentially is going to be on the different strategies that you have to adopt while structuring your problem. So here I have mentioned few of the strategies that we can adopt to structure our problem. You can already see a detailed discussion on one, two and three in another video on my channel which goes into these aspects quite in detail. Here I will just briefly touch upon them for the sake of continuity and uh, it is imperative that you watch the strategies video because a PNL problem cannot be solved if not structured properly and I will keep re-emphasizing on this part. Okay, let's just look at these four aspects once. So first is MISI. So as we will see in the next video also, most of the profit and loss problems, once you have clarified your uh, initial uh, questions, you will have a structure which looks like something like this. Profit is a function of revenue and cost, right? So we know that your profit is revenue minus cost, right? We are using MISI, which is mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. You are breaking your problem down, in this case the profit, into two parts such that both these parts are mutually exclusive. So revenue and cost have no overlapping aspects, so they are exclusive and collectively they are exhaustive. That there is no third element here, right? There is no plus or minus that I will add in a profit case here, right? So this is what I mean by MISI. Uh, over and over again in your profit and loss problem, you will try to make your problem in a MISI framework. So essentially, after you start uh, solving your problem, in most cases, your problem will end up looking something like this. Whereas all of these, your end nodes, right, are representing some element of the problem. Okay, so it could be profits. Are breaking down and are broken down to revenue and cost revenue <coughs> is broken down into volume and variety okay volume is further broken down into market size into market share right all of this we will see in the next video also but i hope you get the drift variable cost fixed cost that this structure is essentially looking something like this Right, so this is what we will try to do in a MISI uh, framework while trying to look at a profit and loss problem. Okay, now uh, this is very generic, but you will also have to go into the specifics. Okay, let's say we are breaking down volume and I'm not breaking it down this way. Okay, then I might break down my volume. Let's say that I am a retailer like Nike. Okay. And I have to look at my volume. So I can break it down along multiple pathways. I can go offline, online. Okay. In offline, I might say my own stores, third party stores. Right. So I am in this case following a MISI structure. Depending on the type of case you will have, you will always try to do this. Okay. Uh, with enough practice, you will be able to get a hang of it. So keep doing that. But remember, MISI is extremely important when it comes to your 
PNL cases. Okay. Now, the second aspect, the process mapping. Okay. I majorly use this in on the cost side of things. Okay. So let's say when I'm analyzing variable costs, I will essentially, and let's say I'm talking about a manufacturing enterprise, right? So I will simply make raw material production distribution and customer service right and look at the variable cost involved in each of these right so it's fairly straightforward right you can use this on the revenue side also if you find something creative here i'll take a small example that uh, uh, i will also be putting up on my channel very soon uh, so let's say that this was the case about a shopping mall okay and uh, one of the shops was facing decline in profit okay so what i did was uh, so we will now in this case we will use process mapping and MISI both so first of all i figured okay volume into cost okay volumes were going down okay now to figure out the drop in volume i said okay we did a so uh, in, I'll not go into the specifics of the case. We uh, asked a lot of questions. And we finally figured that not enough people were entering our shop. The number of people entering our shop had gone down. Okay. Now to figure out why the number of people in my shop had gone down, essentially I went for the process mapping. So with this example, I'm just highlighting how process mapping can be used to solve a PNL problem. First, I used MISI, then I had some intermediate analysis, which gave me the result that number of people going to my shop are going down. So I figured where the location of my shop is. So it's on the second floor east wing of the mall. Now to zero in why the number of people coming to my shop had gone down, I made a process map, which was number of people going to the mall next step number of people going to second floor next step so this will be a percentage this will be a percentage number of people going to the east wing and out of these number of people going to my shop right this is my shop and this is percentage Right. So I use process mapping to figure out what could be going wrong. If the number of people entering my shop has gone down, it could be because of any of these factors. If the number of people overall coming to the mall has gone down and all of these percentages have remained the same. Then also the number of people in my shop will go down because of no fault of mine. Maybe number of people in the mall is fine. Number of people going to the second floor has gone down dramatically. It could be the case that the mall uh, has dysfunctional elevators and uh, escalators because of which not a lot of people want to go to the second floor. In this case also I will get hurt. Assume this is also fine. Then people are there in the east. People are not going to the east wing after coming to the second floor. It might be the case that there is some stench or something foul going about this particular place. So people are going down here. Again no fault of mine. Or it could be the case that this is also fine. And everything else is the same, just the number of people, the fraction coming to my shop has gone down. Now, in this case, I would look at my shop specific factors. So by this is what I mean by a process map and by making a neat process map, essentially, I've been able to isolate factors, some of them external to me, some of them internal to me to figure out where exactly does the problem lie. Okay, so this example, the discussion, this particular discussion that we had here just now, Right, shows you how powerful process mapping can be to isolate an issue in a PNL problem. Okay, now I'll come to the uh, uh, business framework part later. I'll first discuss the value of the formula framework. Okay, uh, what I'll do is I will again discuss the previous example itself. Okay, the mall one. So I said I did some intermediate steps. Right, let's discuss that because I solved them with the formula approach. So again. I figured that my volume was going down and my price was right. My price had not changed. And this was causing the volume drop was causing a revenue drop, which was causing a profit drop. 
okay now i could have broken down volume through a messy approach also but sometimes i find the volume approach to be more convenient okay so what i did so essentially on my left hand side so i have if it's a formula it has to have an lhs equal to rhs right so on the left hand side i have volume which is in terms of units right so my right hand side also should be in terms of units so what i had here was total number of people entering my shop into percentage of them who are buying something into average number of items bought right now essentially my overall volume from that one shop is going to be a function of this right assuming everything else the working hours and everything else has remained the same number of people coming to my shop into number of people uh, into a fraction of that who are turning into customers into the average number of items bought by them if i figure that my average number of items are going down or the percentage of customers that i am able to turn into buying something right if they are going down then perhaps this would suggest that sales force is an issue or some store specific issue perhaps okay i will also i would not just jump to these points i would structure them but i am saying this could be a possible idea but in this case i had these two as fine and i had number of people as a problematic step okay so the formula approach is very helpful because it makes sure that you are not missing out on anything if i had to break down volume through a messy approach it might be the case that i might miss out on the average number of items or the percentage buying with a formula i usually find that i am not able to miss out on anything but if you are comfortable with messy go ahead with that okay you can follow the discussion on all three issues on the separate video where it is more exhaustive okay now with this one example of the mall we have seen this these three approaches okay now what about business framework okay i have put this here because some people actually prefer to solve the whole pnl problem using just the business frameworks so you might have heard of them they are some of them are 3c 1p the 7s 5c 4p 4s right there's a whole variety of these uh i don't personally use them to solve my problem because i feel that they lead to a more unstructured problem solving and perhaps uh, most of us don't have that kind of a business acumen to use them very cautiously but i still have put them there because it's a specific use of these frameworks that is asking pertinent questions okay so whenever i'm stuck in a case and i can't think of anything then i start thinking of okay what are the different things that are there in 3c 1p 7s 5c 4p and this is 4c not 4s so i mainly focus on 4p and 4s right so this is price place promotion product 4c are cost company customer and competitor right so whenever i'm stuck in a case or whenever i can't think of any direction to take my analysis in i try to see if all of these aspects are covered or not and then i use them as a troubleshooting hail mary measure that i can ask certain points around them to figure okay i can do this analysis which is left like most of the cases i look at competitor maybe i have not asked enough questions around the competitor customer sometimes i am down uh, 10 minutes into the case and i realize i still don't have a very clear idea of who my customer is okay sometimes company internal factors could be playing a role right sometimes you might have to look at the promotion strategy sometimes you might have to look at the place right which would include channels also channels of distribution right so just remember these points they are only to be used as a hail mary measure when you can't think of anything else and you have to ask a question or take your analysis in a particular direction okay so these are about the ways in which you can structure your pnl problem now we will look at the specific elements of the pnl problem in the next video and then the third video will be about the preliminary questions that you can ask in a pnl problem
So I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, do check out other videos on the channel. Best of luck. Thank you.